Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. So let us continue solving problems under the enforced concrete design, particularly on flexural strength of T sections. A floor beam projects a rectangular section of 350 mm by 600 mm below a 110 mm thick slab. The tension reinforcement is 825 mm diameter bars. The span length of the beam measured to the center of the supporting columns is 7.3 meters and the beams are centered 3.9 meters apart. Supporting columns have a square cross section with 700 mm side dimension. The concrete strength is 31.05 megapascal and the steel yield strength is 414 megapascal. The nominal moment strength within the span of the floor beam will be calculated. Which of the following most nearly gives the effective flange width of the beam? In the problem, there is no given floor plan, but for you to understand more the analysis of the section, so I have shown here the possible floor plan of the problem. So these are the columns. These are the girders, the members connecting the columns. And then these, these are the secondary beams, so the one connecting the girders. In floor systems, T-section can be used to determine the nominal moment strength at the mid-span section of the beam. Like, for example, if we pass a cutting plane A through the somewhere between the mid-span of the beam, we can see the equivalent T-section. So the flange of the T-section represents the portion of the slab, and then the web portion of the T-section represents the rectangular projection of the beam. So in practical or in actual, due to the loadings on the floor, it will induce compressive stresses on the flange of this T-section. The complete width of the floor system experiences stresses due to the loadings. To be more conservative, this figure shows the assumed compressive stresses in design. So as you can see, instead of using the complete width in receiving the compressive stresses, the width of the flange is limited to some width which is labeled as B sub E. So meaning in the design, this will be the width being considered in determining the nominal moment strength. And this BE is termed as the effective flange width. The ACI code prescribes a limit on the effective flange width of the interior T sections to the smallest of the following. First is that B sub E can be calculated as B sub W plus L over 4. Next is that B sub E is determined as B sub W plus 16T. And then lastly, B sub E is equal to the center to center spacing of beams. Okay, so to determine the governing effective flange width, we will solve for the 3 and then the smallest among the three is the considered effective flange width. So when we say span, this is the clear span between the ends of the beam. So for example, if there are columns at the end of the beam, we should subtract the width of the columns to get the clear span of the beam. So next, you can see here we have B sub W. B sub W is the projected width of the beam under the slab. The variable T is the thickness of the slab. And then for the center to center spacing of beams, so that would be F1 and F2, it is also equivalent to the center line distances of the midpoint of the slabs, such as B. Okay, so let us now calculate the effective flange width. Let us calculate the clear span of the beam. So according to the problem, the distance between the center line of the columns is 7.3 meters. So meaning the 7.3 meters is this one. 
So from the center of the column to the center of the column, that is 7.3 meters. Or in order to compute for the clear span, we just need to subtract half of the width of the column in each side. 7.3 minus half of the column width. According to the problem, the width of the column is 700. So we get the half. If this is from the right side, we will subtract again because on the left side, there is also a column. So minus 700 over 2. So therefore, our clear span L is simply, I could convert this 7.3 into millimeters. So 73 minus 700 over 2 minus 700 over 2 or simply 73 minus the width of the column that is 6,600 millimeters. So going back in our formula, B sub W, so based on our given, B sub W is 350. Take note, this is the B sub W plus L over 4. So let us solve. So that is 2,000 millimeters. Next, we have B sub E equals B sub W plus 16T. The thickness of the slab is 110. So therefore, this is 2,110. And then, for the last formula, according to the problem, the beams are centered 3.9 meters apart. So this is 3,900 millimeter. So the governing flange width or the effective flange width is the minimum of the three. So the minimum of the three is the 2,000 millimeter. So therefore, the answer is letter A. For the third formula, in determining the effective flange width, the center-to-center -center spacing of beams is also equal to B in this case. There are some cases that the adjacent distances between the beams or the clear distances between the edges of the beams are not equal. So for example, this is S1, this is S2. We compute B by S1 plus S2 over 2 because we only take half of the spacing. So S1 over 2, this is S2 over 2. So the formula for B is simply S1 plus S2 over 2 plus B sub W. Also, there are cases where in the given distances is the center-to-center -center spacing of beams. Like, for example, the spacing between these, these beams is 3 meters and then the spacing between these beams is 4 meters. So we... The distances are center to center of the beam. So meaning, we no longer need to use B sub W. We just add half of these 3 meters plus half of these 4 meters. Or simply, that is the average of the center to center spacing distances of the beams. So that is 3.5 in this case.